Welcome, everybody, to Taking Control, the ADHD podcast. I'm Pete Wright. That right over there is Nikki Kinzer with a new haircut. I do. Yes, I have a new haircut. It's so cute. (laughs) People can't see that. I can see that. It's very cute. Thank you. It's all short. It's short and a little blonder than normal. (laughs) (laughs) It's good to change it up every now and again. Well, and and it's gray here in Oregon. And so, you know, if you can put a little sunshine in your hair, then why not? (laughs) Right? (laughs) I love it. The question is, was your hair before a problem or a possibility? Boom. Segue. Mic drop. Uh Nice. Nicely done. Well done. You take it from here. Okay. <laughs> you take it from hair. Well, it, it really isn't about hair today. Um, yeah, no, we, but, but, but great segue. We're going to be talking about problems versus possibilities. And um, this is sort of, where did I get this? This is something that we talked about in um, one of my coaching classes. Uh, I've, in the last year, I've been taking this advanced um, program, and, and uh, we have these words that we dissect, that we kind of like, we look at the distinctions between the words, and the, the problems versus possibilities really just stuck with me, because uh, so often when we have a challenge, what do we pay attention to? Well, the challenge of it, the problem. Yeah, yeah. right, the problem. The negative we're, language. Exactly. I mean, we're so focused on what's going wrong, you know, we're not really paying attention to uh, how to, f- necessarily how to fix it or how, what the solutions are or, you know, possibilities, right? So, a um, couple things that I want to point out when we, when we pay attention to just the problem, then typically our energy is pretty low when we're thinking about it. We're probably kind of sad depending on what the challenge is, might be a little defensive, right? Um, it's also really easy to blame other people. I'm not guilty of that. I don't know all. what you're talking about, and it's probably your fault. <laughs> exactly. It's not me. It's them. Uh, but, you know, all of these all of these negative feelings kind of turn up when we're just paying attention to the problem. And, of course, when you have a problem or you have a challenge that you're trying to work on, I mean, there, there has to be some awareness of obviously of what's going on and, and, and what we want to change. Um, but what I want to point out is when we start looking at it in a different way and we shift from just problem solving mode, um, to actually focusing on the possibilities, there's a lot of things that can happen and that, that negative energy turns into positive energy and all of a sudden, you know, the doors start opening and all these possibilities and opportunities open, which, you know, for the most part gets people really inspired and excited, right? I mean, that as soon as you, you talk about, well, okay, this is the issue you, but here is a possible solution. It's like, oh yeah, that makes sense. You know, I want to try that. You become a lot more hopeful, optimistic, all of those things. But I think most important is you become more empowered, right? You actually feel like maybe you have some control over this challenge or problem that you're dealing with. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of what the show is about. It's just sort of how do we, you know, shift that perspective, um, and really, I think for me, the challenge is just making it not so intimidating or overwhelming, right? Trying to make the challenge a little bit not so big. You know, you know what I like about it? Let tell me tell me. you. Let me tell you what I like about it. I ran into this story the other day on Loki's Wager. Are you, have you ever heard of Loki's I, no. Wager? In fact, my face is like, huh? What? What's that? <laughs> Uh, Loki was, uh, you know, he was a Norse, he was the Norse god of trickery. Uh, I'm sure there are people listening who know much more about Loki than I do. Um, He's also the villain in several of the Thor and Avengers movies. So Loki has kind of a cinematic history, recent history. But in in mythology, uh, there is a story about how Loki uh, made a wager with some dwarves. And he lost. He lost the bet. And the price on uh, of the bet was his head. If he, you know, he'd agreed. If he loses the bet, he would sacrifice his head to the dwarves. But of course, Loki is the god of trickery, and so he, uh, you know, he said, "You can have my head, but you can't have my neck." So once you figure out where my head stops and my neck begins, you can separate it there, and then we can you you, you can go forward. Well, of course the the dwarves could not agree 
on where the head stops and the neck, begin, neck begins, right? Wow. And so uh, they ended up, you know, the, the two sides argue for days and days. And, and while there were some that both could agree was head and there were some parts that both could agree was neck, there was no spot at which both could ever really agree that the head stopped and the neck began. And so Loki's wager has become this term used for arguments that can't be decided because, you know, one side can't agree how to define one of the terms. I have been thinking so much about this lately because of what, it, because of, in light of what we're talking about on the show today. And, and I know this is a really weird sort of connection, but I think it, I, I think it's relevant that when you come up to a, what causes you stress, what causes you to focus on problems or challenges is usually because you have not yet decided that this isn't necessarily probably a problem about heads and necks and once you reframe the the situation that you find yourself in once you reframe the challenge itself it becomes a possibility to solve uh, and hmm. and so i you know every problem that i run into every time i find myself feeling that anxiety we've been talking about over the last couple of weeks every time i find myself imagining this false future that i don't really know is going to happen it's usually because i don't really understand the problem and i'm focusing on the negativity of it on the confusion of it on the right. inflexibility of it without looking at it from enough other angles uh, so that i can i can figure out how do i solve this problem without losing my head mhm Mm-hmm. Well, it is, it exactly ties into what we're talking about. Um, and, and really what, what I wanted to take, how I was going to take this kind of a step further was, you know, instead of focusing on the problem or how to fix the problem necessarily, what if we challenged ourselves to look at what's going on and try, you know, go back into our past and look at when things went right around that challenge? Mm -hmm. Because oftentimes we forget that, we have probably have had some success in, in these areas, but we forget those successes. And so we just dwell on the times that we feel like we failed or that we didn't do, do right, you know? Um, and so that would be, you know, my example that I have is just, I I have a lot of people that come to me with time management issues, you know, that they really feel like they are always running late in the morning or they can't get anywhere on time. And, and instead of focusing so much on every time you were late and beating yourself up over all of that, you know, all of the consequences that have come from that. Let's really take a step back and look at, you know, when were you on time? When did it work? And what was in place to, to make that happen and start going from that angle and that perspective of, you know, when you did do right and, and figure out how can we transfer that to your current situation. And a lot of times people don't even look at it that way. Like it never even occurred to them. And sometimes it's even hard to, to think about when they did it right. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, that, that was sort of the point here too, well, is, is, yeah, is looking at that. Because how often do you run into people that, that have such a horrible short-term memory for positive events? Oh, of course. I mean, it happens all the time. Mm-hmm. It happens all the time. And that's really a lot of what the, you know, strength-based um, coaching is about. It's also that positive psychology um, angle too, is looking at, you know, what you're doing right. What are your strengths? Um, what are you good at? And then how do we transfer that into these things that you, that you may be challenged with? Um, but it's really, it really changes the perspective and then it opens up a whole new conversation around these possibilities, you mm-hmm. know, verse just about the problem. Um, and then I think that sometimes people forget that we have a choice when it comes to how we perceive things. Um, you know, we've talked about failure before and how, is it really failure or is it a learning experience? If you think that you always have failed and that's the negativity part that you put on it, then that's what you're going to carry with you into the future. But if you look at it as just a learning experience and wow, this is what I learned from it and this is what I'm going to do different. I mean, it completely puts a different perspective and a very positive one, in my opinion, um, a happier one and a more mindful one, you right, know, to tie right. in from what we talked about last week. Um, but to remember that we have that choice too. So, yeah, there's a, there's, there's a funny piece to that, which is this, this idea of, um, you know, when, when you feel like 
things are a failure. And I think this is this is one of those traits of of people who have really uh, adopted a more Zen, like, and, and I mean, practical Zen approach to events, which is, you know, bad things don't happen. Things happen. They're only bad based on our reaction to them. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And so that's what makes it, you know, challenging. Once you once you kind of move past that and realize that, you know, I'm late to this meeting and somebody's going to be mad, but that's their anger, not mine. Right. I'm not going to adopt their stress uh, and let that define who I am uh, because of events that may have been out of my control. Right. Um, you know, and and so I'm going to make this choice to to just make this an event, not a bad event, not a, a hurtful event, but just an event. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to move through it and and experience what I'm experiencing right now today. And that that's still sticking with me from our conversation about 10 uh, percent happier last week, that this this idea of time, I, I, man, that has made a big impact on my week of of not of living for right this second and not worrying about the future I don't know is going to is going to occur or mm-hmm. the past that I'll never get again. Well, it's fantastic. It is. It's a very yeah. it's a very kind of illuminating way to look at my days. And I've been Absolutely. I think more productive as a result. Yes, yeah. I I think more I think for me it's it's definitely being more productive and then just really um appreciating things more, you know. Yeah. Um and taking that moment to actually just even to myself, you know, saying to my, yeah, I really appreciate this moment or I appreciate what was just said or just being able to ponder it for, for a moment longer than what you would have. It, yeah. It just makes yeah. life a little bit more, um, grateful. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Well, I'm glad. Yeah. I was taking a picture with ScanBot, you know, the scanning tool that I love so much. I'm uh-huh. sure we've talked about this on the show. And I stopped yesterday. I was taking a scan of a document and I stopped and I put my phone down and I thought to myself, this is magical. <laughs> what I'm doing right now is absolutely a bit of alchemy. And I, it's, I think it's important, even as a nerd, from a technology perspective, to stop and reflect that what, what we do every day to get our work done is magical. Mm. Uh, and that's a really, uh, it's, it's a special place of, as you say, gratitude. I like mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. All right. Well. Awesome. This is quick. It is. Let's get out of here. Yeah. Thanks, everybody, for listening. If you want to learn more about the show, head over to Take Control ADHD. You can subscribe for free in iTunes or your podcatcher of choice. All the links are right up there. Uh, if you're new to podcasts or you're used to listening to the show just on the web, make sure you click on the, hey, I'm new to podcasts. Teach me how to do this. And it'll show you kind of where to get the apps to subscribe. And There's and, an actual and, button that says that? <laughs> well, well, it's roughly hey, I'm new to loose, podcasts. <laughs> loosely translated. <laughs> Uh, I want to see that button. Yeah, that's right. right. Hey, I'm new to podcast. I'm going to ch- edit that right now. That's right. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, join us. Join us. Join us on the show. Subscribe to the show. And you know what? We haven't asked for this in a little while, but really appreciate those of you who take the time to head into iTunes. If you're an iTunes user, you log into your account, you find our show in the uh, in the iTunes directory, and you click on that rate and review. And uh, and you say some nice things and give us some of your spare stars. That helps other people discover the show. The, the last one on there is uh, from Patchwork Woman. She says we brighten her day instantly, which is so sweet. From the first words out of their mouths, Pete and Nikki have a way of just making you giggle and feel great. And their advice is just what I need. I've been listening for a few weeks, and I'm always excited when there's a new episode recommending this to all my friends with ADHD. You are awesome, Patchwork Woman. Thank you so Very much nice. for for leaving this uh, it's a motivating support for us to do this show. So, on behalf of Nikki Kinzer, I'm Pete Wright, and we'll catch you next week on Taking Control, the ADHD podcast. Mm-hmm.